Okay, welcome to uh, lecture 12, part one of lecture 12. Uh, lecture 12 is gonna cover the musculoskeletal system, which is chapter 15 in your book. We has not quite as beefy as the nervous system, but almost, it wasn't quite enough information to split into four parts, so we split it into three. We added the uh, video presentation that you should have already watched uh, to the beginning of this week. Uh, so we're gonna do part one of lecture 12 this week, and then we're gonna do part two and three of lecture 12 next week. Uh, and then <clears throat> you'll have your quiz after that. So next week, there won't be a quiz, lucky you. The downside is that it is gonna be a whopper of a quiz. I think it's the longest and uh, probably one of the hardest quizzes of the semester. It's, it's a beastie. Uh, the good news though, like I said, is that you don't have a quiz next week, just the following week. Uh, but yeah, it wasn't quite enough to split it into two quizzes. And so anyway, we did the best that we could do. Now, We're going to go all the way back to week two and three. Um, the notochord is just formed and neurulation has started. And at the same time that neurulation is happening, there's this other process that overlaps with it, starts just ahead of it. But there's this other process going on at the same time called gastrulation, which is the conversion of a bilaminar disc to a trilaminar disc. Right? And basically, what we're doing is this ectoderm tissue is differentiating, adding a layer and differentiating into mesenchyme tissue. So now we have three layers, ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. So that's where we're at now. Uh, <clears throat> on either side of the notochord in the mesoderm, there is a thickening, which is known as the paraxial mesoderm. This guy's eventually going to break off into sections that are called somites. As the somites form, they're going to differentiate into three different tissue types. Now, the book lumps the dermatome and the myotome together into the dermomyotome, but I think that's ridiculous. So we're going to do it my way. So here we have the sclerotome layer. So this is the somite right here. So we have the sclerotome layer, the myotome layer, and the dermatome layer of the somite. The uh, sclerotome layer is going to become most of the axial skeleton and all of the appendicular skeleton. So the axial skeleton, of course, is the center of the body, skull, spine, ribs, sternum, all that stuff. Um, and then the appendicular skeleton is the appendages, right? The arms and legs. So the sclerotome is going to become most of the axial skeleton and all of the appendicular skeleton. Um, the head and the face forms a little bit differently. Um, they form from mesenchyme that differentiates from neural crest cells in the cranial region. We'll talk about that in a different chapter. Um, the myotome is destined to become the muscles and the related structures and the dermatome, of course, is going to become the dermis of the skin not the epidermis that you see, but the dermis of the skin, which is the deeper layer of the skin that's made mostly of <clears throat> fibrous and loose connective tissue. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the bones, but you can't talk about bones without talking about cartilage. Now, most bones start out as cartilage and you find cartilage in most of the connections between bones. There are uh, two ways that cartilage is formed. I'm sorry, excuse me, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> the way the cartilage is formed is pretty simple, okay? Mesenchyme cells pack together very densely and they differentiate into chondroblasts. Then these chondroblasts start secreting collagen fibers and intracellular matrix. Um, and then as this matrix is produced, collagen and or elastic fibers are added depending on which type of cartilage uh, is gonna be produced, you know, in varying amounts. So you might want to write it down in case, it, <clears throat> in case you see it on a quiz sometime in the near future that uh, cartilage forms as mesenchyme cells pack together very densely and differentiate into chondroblasts. 
these chondroblasts then start to secrete collagen fibers and intracellular matrix. So make sure you take a second to write that down. Uh, there are three kinds of cartilage that we're worried about, okay? The first kind is called hyaline cartilage. So that's this stuff over here. Hyaline, car hyaline cartilage forms the ribs, the junction between the ribs and the sternum. It also forms the lining, the cartilage lining of all the synovial joints in the body. And it is also the type of cartilage that most bones are formed out of. The second type is fibrous cartilage. Fibrous cartilage is found primarily in the intervertebral discs, which are the discs in between the sp uh, spinal bones, the intervertebral discs, and also in the pubic symphysis, okay? The pubic symphysis. Uh, the third one is called elastic cartilage, and elastic cartilage is found primarily in the auricle of the ear. All this stuff down here that's nice and stretchy and springy is all still cartilage. This is elastic cartilage. Um, you will need to know the three types of cartilage on a quiz, so make sure you write those down. We have hyaline cartilage, fibrous cartilage, and elastic cartilage. Now, <clears throat> back to bones. So bones form basically in two different ways. The first way that we're going to talk about is the less common way, which is called intramembranous bone formation. Intramembranous bone formation. Uh, this is the way that most of the bones in your skull form. Most of the limbs and axial bones form uh, through a process called intrachondral or endochondral bone, bone formation. Uh, let's see here. So intramembranous bone formation. Basically what happens with this is the mesenchyme grows in between two membranes. So you have two membranes that are right up against each other. You can't see them, but they would be here and here. You have two membranes that are right up against each other and this mesenchyme tissue grows in between them. As the mesenchyme tissue grows in between the two membranes, uh, it is very densely packed and very highly vascularized. As it does this, the cells differentiate into osteoblasts that start laying down a protein matrix. No minerals just yet. This uh, bone matrix without minerals in it is called osteoid tissue. Now it's very important that I clarify this because it is going to be on a quiz, so make sure you write it down. There is no cartilage at any point during intramembranous bone formation. We start with osteoid tissue. The osteoid tissue is then mineralized into bone. No cartilage during intramembranous bone formation. It will be on the quiz, I promise you. Um, so anyway, as this um, osteoid tissue grows, some of the cells start to differ differentiate into osteoblasts. And these guys start pr um, producing calcium phosphate and they deposit the calcium phosphate into the bone matrix. Uh, as this happens, some of the osteoblasts get trapped in the matrix and then they differentiate into osteocytes. Okay, now um, I lost my place. Oh, right, so as this calcification happens, it starts out as just little tiny shards called spicules. So the first thing you see is spicules of bones within this osteoid tissue. These spicules of bone then get bigger and coalesce as is so often the case during the formation of so many structures in the body. They get bigger, they coalesce, they join together and they start to form layers of bone. These layers are called lamellae. Some of the lamellae end up surrounding blood vessels and this forms haversion systems, which is how blood and, and nutrients get into the um, osteoid cells. And then the outer part of the bone, um, a whole bunch of lamellae combine together to form dense compact bone, where closer to the center of the bone, you have spongy or spiculated bone. Now, uh, centrally in the bone, some of these mesenchyme cells differentiate into bone marrow and others differentiate into osteoclasts. So you have the osteoblasts and the osteoclasts. Osteoblasts create minerals, create new bone. Osteoclasts dissolve old bone. 
Um, so these osteoclasts also uh, contribute to the sponginess at the center of the bone. Now over time, and you might want to write this down because it might be on a quiz, uh, over time the combined action of osteoblasts and osteoclasts will remodel the bone and it's actually going to fully replace all of the bones matrix several times over the course of a lifetime. So you actually get several new skeletons over your whole lifetime. You replace it several times over. Now, a little bit at once. It's not like somebody pulls your skeleton out and puts a new one in. Uh, but yeah, <clears throat> the combined action of osteoblasts and osteoclasts remodel the bone and will fully replace it several times over the course of your lifetime. Okay, so that's it for, os um, for intramembranous bone formation. Again, key points to remember, no cartilage in intramembranous bone formation. Okay, and Osteoclasts and osteoblasts combine together to remodel the bone, to reshape it, to make it stronger, whatever needs to be done to it. And over the course of your lifetime, you're gonna replace your skeleton several times. Now, let's go ahead and talk about endochondral ossification. Okay, while we're talking about this, we're gonna also talk about the development of the long bones. We're gonna cover them both at the same time, which makes sense because the long bones Sorry about my kids in the background, they're playing outside. Um, the long bones are the primary example of endochondral bone formation, all right? So here we go, endochondral bone formation. So the first thing that happens is mesenchyme cells gather together in a compact formation in the area that's going to become the bone and then they start to differentiate. Some of them, transform into chondroblasts, which, are, which then start secreting cartilaginous matrix. Some of them differentiate into a membrane, the cells of a membrane that surround the uh, cartilage, which is called the perichondrium, the perichondrium. So we've got all this densely packed mesenchyme that differentiates into chondroblasts and starts secreting intracellular matrix. And then we develop this periosteum, or sorry, this perichondrium all around it. So you've got this nice, neat little package here until you have this, which is a cartilaginous model of a bone, right? Kind of like how you make the plaster cast before you bronze the statue. <laughs> Similar idea, you start off with a cartilaginous model and this cartilaginous model is eventually, is eventually gonna be replaced with bone. Okay, now, once you have this model formed, um, a couple of things are gonna happen at nearly the same time. So the book wasn't super clear on this, okay? I did a whole bunch of outside research to make sure that I could have a really nice, clear, um, so that you guys could understand it. So here's the process. Um, other mesenchyme, okay? Not the mesenchyme. So you have this mesenchyme that differentiates into the chondroblasts, right? So this is mesenchyme from outside the cartilaginous model is going to invade the uh, cartilage. It's going to invade the cartilage. And after it invades the cartilage, it's going to start differentiating into vascular tissue. And it's also going to differentiate into osteoblasts and osteoclasts. Right, so you want to remember on a quiz that other mesenchyme invades the cartilage and differentiates into vascular tissue, osteoclasts, and osteoblasts. Now, uh, the vascular tissue is going to continue to differentiate into blood vessels and blood cells, and of course, we all know that the osteoblasts and the osteoclasts are going to start depositing calcium in the cartilage. Right, primarily the osteoblasts do this. So the first site of ossification is in the femur. And who remembers when it is? Eight weeks, roughly, right? Right around eight weeks, you start to see that first ossification site in the femur. Uh, the first place in the bone that you start to see calcium deposited is under the, right under the perichondrium. And as soon as this happens, the perichondrium is no longer the perichondrium. Now it is the periosteum because now we have bone instead of cartilage that it's surrounding. While this is happening, the chondroblasts begin to hypertrophy first and then die. And they die via apoptosis, it's programmed cell death. And the reason that they do this is uh, in order to make room for the blood vessels and the osteoblasts and osteoclasts, okay? They have to make room for the new invading tissue. 
Um, so there's another type of cell that comes from this invading mesenchyme, and these are hemopoietic cells. These hemopoietic cells, and this might be on the quiz too, these hemopoietic cells are going to become the bone marrow, right? So from this invading mesenchyme tissue, we have vascular tissue, osteoblasts, osteoclasts, and hemopoietic cells that are formed from it. As this tissue invades, the oste or the chondroblasts hypertrophy and then die in order to make space for the new cells to invade. Okay, Whew, that was a lot, right? So all of this starts happening first in the diaphysis, which is the shaft, the long part of the bone. As ossification continues, the bone matrix is remodeled by the combined action of osteoblasts and osteoclasts until it takes on its finished form and its finished shape. Now, this process doesn't begin until late in the embryonic period, and it will continue throughout pregnancy. And by birth, the diaphysis of the long bones are mostly ossified, but the epiphysis, which is the ends of the bones, are still cartilage, okay? Now, once the diaphysis is finished, uh, the same process is gonna occur in the epiphysis, but remember, this is after birth, right? <clears throat> so you start to have this mesenchyme tissue that invades the cartilage and differentiates into vascular tissue, bone marrow, osteoblasts, and osteoclasts, and then they start, uh, <clears throat> then they start uh, putting minerals into the bone matrix that forms, right? They start ossifying the cartilage. <clears throat> Uh, these are called so these are called secondary ossification centers these do not start ossifying until after birth uh, and they'll continue to do that they'll continue to ossify for the first few years by then everything is ossified except for the articular cartilage which is the cartilage that forms at the uh, at the end of the bones for the joint surface and then there's going to be this growth plate or this epiphyseal cartilage plate uh, that's going to continue uh, to stay cartilage now, from this point, as the bone continues to elongate, you know, the kid's going to grow and the bone's going to get longer and longer and longer by adding cartilage cells to this epiphyseal plate. You're going to add more cartilage to it so the plate gets thicker and then the invading mesenchyme is going to ossify that cartilage, right? This happens on both sides. So you get a longer and longer and longer bone as the kid grows. Okay. <clears throat> um, once the bone reaches its adult length, the growth plate is also going to ossify. It ossifies the same way that all the other cartilage ossifies. Now, while the bone is lengthening, the relative width also needs to be, be maintained, right? Because bones don't just get longer, they get thicker and stronger as well as they get longer. The way that this is accomplished is by modulating the activity rates of the osteoblasts and the osteoclasts. Because remember, the blasts lay down new bone and the clasts absorb old bone. So all that's happening as the bone gets thicker is the blasts are laying down more bone, more new bone tissue than the osteoclasts are absorbing, right? So the bone gets thicker as it gets longer, okay? Now, let's talk about joints. Joints are fun. So first thing we need to do is define what a joint is. <clears throat> and that's really simple because for purposes of this, of this class, a joint is a structure that joins two bones together, period. A structure that, jo that joins two bones is a joint. Okay, got that? Now, generally what happens is um, throughout, and this is throughout the musculoskeletal, musculoskeletal system generally, uh, a model is formed using mesenchyme tissue, right? So joints begin forming during about the sixth week and it happens pretty fast, right? So by the end of the eighth week, which is less than three weeks later, the joints already resemble, resemble adult joints. So you might wanna write down, in case it appears on a quiz, write this down, less than three weeks after a joint begins to form, it already resembles an adult joint. Okay, and this is significant because this is quite a ways before the bones are fully formed. Anyway, so during the sixth week, uh, you see an area of condensed mesenchyme that forms between uh, the two future bones. Um, and this is called the interzonal mesenchyme, right? Right here, interzonal mesenchyme forms in between the two future bones. 
uh, this dense interzonal mesenchyme is uh, what happens next depends on the kind of joint that it's destined to become. Now, there are uh, a few different kinds of joints that we're going to concern ourselves with. Okay, the first one here is a fibrous joint. Now, it's important that you understand that a fibrous joint is not the same thing as fibrocartilage. Okay, there actually is no cartilage in a fibrous joint, right? It's just dense fibrous connective tissue. Where you find these primarily in the body is in between the skull plates, right? The, the plates in your skull never actually fully fuse together. They always st stay separate. In fact, if you get in there carefully with a scalpel and cut through this fibrous tissue, then you can actually slide the um, skull plates apart like a jigsaw puzzle, right? <laughs> and I've actually done this, so I know it works. Uh, but anyway, so this is where you find fibrous joints. Fibrous joints uh, are, in the, are between the skull plates. So for those of you who were wondering, uh, all the screaming outside was my children trying to chase a chicken off of the top of our pergola. <laughs> At any rate, so um, fibrous joints, there we go, that's that. Um, dense, mesenchyme, dense interzonal mesenchyme differentiates into fibrous tissue, end of story. That's about all there is to it. Now, let's talk about fibrocartilage, right? Cartilaginous joints. There's two kinds of cartilaginous joints, fibrocartilage and hyaline. Uh, there's probably some others, but those are the two main ones that we're concerned about, all right? Um, so let's start with uh, fibrocartilage. Um, it's basically the same process. You start with dense interzonal mesenchyme tissue, which then differentiates into fibrocartilage. It transforms through genetic programming from this into that, and that's all there is to it. Pretty unexciting. Well, it's actually really, really, really cool that that happens, but uh, it's not very exciting to talk about. Um, and the same thing happens with hyaline cartilage. So you start with a dense interzonal mesenchyme and it differentiates into chondroblasts, which secrete intracellular matrix. And boom, you have hyaline cartilage. Uh, pretty much the same process for fibrocartilage and hyaline cartilage. Now, um, the formation of synovial joints is a little more complicated. So we're going to talk a little bit about this. Uh, you're going to want to know the sequence of events because that's going to be on one of the quizzes as well. So pay attention to the sequence of how synovial joints form. Okay. So first you start off with dense interzonal mesenchyme. Okay. And then... Um, the periphery of the interzonal mesenchyme at first, only the periphery is going to differentiate. And what it's going to differentiate into is dense fibrous tissue. And this dense fibrous tissue is going to become the joint capsule and not just the joint capsule, but all of the associated ligaments with that joint, right? So you have like, I don't know, several ligaments, for example, in your knee and your hip. And all of those ligaments are uh, formed from this dense uh, fibrous tissue that uh, differentiates around the periphery of the interzonal mesenchyme. The next thing that happens is the center area here begins to hollow out. And of course, how does it hollow out? Apoptosis. The cells commit suicide. They explode. Uh, and as that happens, you're left with this fluid-filled cavity. This is going to become the synovial cavity. The third step is that all of the leftover mesenchyme is going to differentiate into synovial membrane tissue. And after it differentiates into synovial membrane tissue, it is going to begin producing synovial fluid and provide the synovial fluid for the joint. Okay, And that's pretty much how it goes. So one more time, so you have a chance to write it down. Dense interzonal mesenchyme. The periphery differentiates into dense fibrous tissue forming the capsule and the ligaments. The Interzonal mesenchyme then hollows out in the center through apoptosis, forming the synovial cavity, and the remaining mesenchyme tissue differentiates into synovial tissue, forming the synovial membrane, and begins producing synovial fluid for the joint. Okay, everybody got that?
Uh, you know, it makes sense that the process would be a little more complicated because the end product is a little more complicated uh, and that's okay. Um, so that's where we're going to call it for this lecture. Uh, when we come back, we're going to start talking about the formation of the axial skeleton, uh, which for purposes of this class is the head, spine, ribs, and sternum. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, or if there's anything you need clarification on, please make sure you write those questions down, bring them with you to the um, Zoom meeting on Thursday. Uh, I'll look forward to seeing you guys there. Uh, since there's no quiz next week, um, probably going to see a lot less of you there. I guess we'll see when we get there. Um, but yes, please do come to that meeting, bring your questions, bring your concerns, things that you need clarification about, and we'll talk about it. Uh, so that's going to do it for this lecture. We'll see you guys next week with part two of lecture 12, where we're going to go over the fabulous axial skeleton. Aloha.